me talk about the DEF supply chain. And just as a reminder, we supply about 30% of the DEF in the United States. The trucking sector is dependent on DEF. All trucks manufactured after 2010 cannot operate without DEF. And Pilot operates, if not the largest, one of the largest DEF supply networks in the country. We have 23 rail served DEF facilities that make the DEF and we have 18 rail transloaders. Of the 300 plus million gallons of DEF that Pilot supplies to the industry every year, 74% is moved via rail. Get a little comfy here. This might take a quick second. 
So I wanna try to keep you guys in the know, right? Some of you guys probably don't pay attention to this and some of you guys get scared to pay attention to it because people try to label you as a conspiracy theorist. Even Noah was a conspiracy theorist, right? He was talking about the flood. He was warning everybody that the flood was coming. And they were like, yeah, whatever, dude. And then the flood came, right? And a lot of other things just in the last couple years you've been warned about and now it's all coming true, so. Don't leave any of your conspiracy theory stuff down there. And if you listen to yesterday's video, which you should, I never uh, blamed Russia for anything. I said they were giving you clues, okay? They, right? The government, okay? Whoever they're gonna use for their scapegoat, right? But the bottom line is fertilizers messed up, food source places, facilities that uh, strategically send out food are messed up. They're telling you guys, now if you've been following any of this stuff the last couple years, China's been hoarding oats, grains, all that kind of stuff. Read your Bible, you know, Egypt did that too before the famine, right? So you're like, you got all these little warnings going on and I don't know if you're paying attention. And so I just wanna let you know about this one right here. All right? Now this is the DEF warning, D-E-F. Every diesel motor since 2010 has this DEF fluid that you have to put into it. Even the skid steer there and the trucks, all 18 wheelers that move all your food around, all your goods and all your services. Now they say there's some kind of, um, you know, diesel fuel shortage and all this stuff. And I'm here to tell you, this is the guy from the Flying J gas stations, right? The Flying J are the one of the largest, or if not the largest, um, diesel fueling centers in America. They have the, they have stores all over the highways, and they they deal in a lot of this DEF fluid. Now they're calling this a shortage of this uh, fluid, this ur urine or whatever it is. But they say there's count a, on it. They say there's a urea shortage. A urea shortage. I'm the flying J. It's like the CFO, CEO. He'll tell you what he is. I got the clip for you here. But he's telling you that he has been instructed by the railroads to cut his shipments back. And then he tries to explain to them what is that gonna mean to delivering fuel to the end users and to the 18 wheelers that move all the goods and services in our country. And the DEF fluid, the DEF fluid, and how not having the DEF fluid can literally stop 18 wheelers in their tracks, okay? Because this stuff's all computerized now and even on these newer trucks, if you don't have the DEF fluid in there and the motor senses it, it just shuts your motor off, right? So we already have a kill switch in there. I just wanna bring you guys the information and you do with it what you can, or you know, you do with it what you will, right? But I'm gonna tell you what I did with that information. Because like I said, it's been on my mind for a little bit now. It's a couple years. And I've, I've been hearing these rumblings a couple years about this death fluid. And then I never really thought about it. And then I started really thinking about it. But you guys, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen if you guys get prepared for something, right? The worst thing can happen is that you'll have a good supply of whatever it is that you're trying to make sure you're prepared with. So I'll have a good supply of death fluid right the stuff doesn't go bad you just have to make sure it doesn't freeze and i have the ability to do that now okay what's the worst thing that can happen you could have some extra food that you'll have to chew through and that might keep you out of the stores for a little while i mean what's the worst that can happen you could get a thousand gallons worth of gasoline right here on your homestead in case something happens right in case gas goes double i'm still going up with the increases but that I'm buying gas wholesale, right? And you guys are paying retail at the pump. And I try to give you all these tips and tricks, okay? And I sold a, saved a bunch of money um, with my gas tank so far, right? Just right off the bat. And uh, I think I'll do a video coming up. I've been trying to keep my receipts together and everything to show you guys all the receipts. Hold on a second, I gotta grab this here. And I want to show you guys the receipts and stuff to show you. And I'm going to show you straight up. Gas has gone up 100 plus percent in just two years, y'all. I mean, that's 50% a year increase on average. I mean, that's not sustainable, right?
But at the same time, we just have to kind of keep our eyes on what's going on, make adjustments, right? Like, you know, stuff happens, look in history, stuff always happens, but you just have to make adjustments and make sure you have elasticity, right? Like you can be flexible and that you can manage these storms that are coming your way, right? Storms are coming your way, right? Conspiracy theorists, blah, blah, blah. Storms are coming your way, okay? So it's up to you to prepare, right? Watch our channel, make sure you're subscribed. I'm trying to give you this information. What you do with it, that's on you. But I, you see what I did with it. I went out and got me a 50 gallon drum of death fluid, which will last me probably several years and they'll get this worked out till then them figured out so I'm just you know trying to encourage you guys to get stocked up on what you can remember one is done two is one and three is done okay leave a comment down below if you guys have been getting some extra preps together we'll see you guys on the next video right it's not doom and gloom nothing about it all it is is giving you guys information so you can make educated decisions if you don't have the information how could you possibly make an educated decision all right, all right, we'll see you guys on the next video. My name is Shamit Konar. I'm the Chief Executive Officer for Pilot Flying J. We operate the largest network of travel centers in the United States serving the U.S. trucking industry. On April 13th, we were informed by the Union Pacific that we were required to reduce shipments by 26%. In subsequent conversations, we were asked to reduce them even further by 50% or face embargoes. Currently account for approximately 20% of the country's highway, or as we call it, over the road diesel supply, 20%, as well as 30% of the diesel exhaust fluid supply, also known as DEF. I would like to take this opportunity to take you through a few of the consequences that Union Pacific's mandate will have on the supply chain, the availability of fuel, and fuel prices. First, let me talk about the DEF supply chain. And just as a reminder, we supply about 30% of the DEF in the United States. The trucking sector is dependent on DEF. All trucks manufactured after 2010 cannot operate without DEF. And Pilot operates, if not the largest, one of the largest DEF supply networks in the country. We have 23 rail served DEF facilities that make the DEF, and we have 18 rail transloaders. Of the 300 plus million gallons of DEF that Pilot supplies to the industry every year, 74% is moved via rail. Union Pacific's restrictions will prevent Pilot from keeping many markets adequately supplied with DEF, likely causing shortages that will sideline trucks and reduce trucking capacity. Let me give you some context. A single rail car carries 21,500 gallons of DEF on average, okay? A single truck generally takes in seven gallons of DEF every time they fill. This is based on our data. So that implies that a single rail car is basically providing 3,000 trucks worth of DEF fills. For some more context, basically, Every rail car that gets missed in terms of DEF delivery will reduce trucking potential by 5 million miles. All right, that's a really big number, 5 million miles, because you've got 3,000 fills and DEF blends with diesel at a ratio of 2.7% per 100 gallons. All right, so 2.7 gallons of DEF allow a truck to drive 100, uh, to use 100 gallons. Furthermore, a reduction in freight transported by the UP will only add additional pressure on the trucking sector in general. The railways are pulling back. We got to move the stuff on trucks. If we can't supply DEF, there's more pressure on the sector and we let the sector down. Second, fuel availability and pricing. Let me begin with diesel. US diesel inventories today are running 10 to 15% below what they have been in the last five years at their lowest point. So if you take the minimum diesel inventory over the last five years, today we're 10 to 15% below that number. Certain markets like the Northeast, the West and the Southwest are even in a worse shape than the rest of the country. 
Renewable fuels like biodiesel, renewable diesel move exclusively on rail, on ships, or on trucks, and there are no pipeline alternatives. Certain states like California are heavily dependent on the imports of renewable fuels that are generally transported on rail. Fourth, over 50% of pilots' renewable diesel is transported on rail, and having our capacity cut by 50% would actually increase fuel prices in these states and potentially run out some of these locations. Similar to my colleagues here, Pilot is facing a threat of se severe reduction in rail service allocations. For Pilot, the service reduction allocations are being imposed by the Union Pacific Railroad. On April 13th, we were informed by the Union Pacific that we were required to reduce shipments by 26%. In subsequent conversations, we were asked to reduce them even further by 50% or face embargoes. We're not aware of any other company being instructed by the Union Pacific or any other railroad to reduce their shipments to the extent they're asking pilot. We understand through conversations with the Union Pacific that its allocations are based on a simplistic approach of looking at those shippers who have increased their number of shipments between January 2022 and March 2022. This does not take into account the overall number of shipments received at pilots' facilities, which, by the way, have remained static over this period. We believe the Union Pacific's approach does not fairly and proportionately allocate the supply issues because pilot has not increased the total number of cars it's received every month since January. What's actually happened is Pilot has become a shipper on some, uh, car, for some cars that we were not shippers before. So our facilities are still receiving the same number of cars. It's just the name of whose shipping has changed because we've taken control over some of the cars because of the issues we've had with the railroads so that we have the optionality to deliver these cars in markets that they can take, right? So the total number of cars has stayed the same. We understand and appreciate that the current market conditions are imposing significant constraints on the railroads, and we're committed to help ease this congestion. However, 26 to 50 percent reduction in our allocations will have substantial consequences for the markets. We, I would like to take this opportunity to take you through a few of the consequences that Union Pacific's mandate will have on the supply chain, the availability of fuel and fuel prices. First, let me talk about the DEF supply chain. And just as a reminder, we supply about 30% of the DEF in the United States. The trucking sector is dependent on DEF. All trucks manufactured after 2010 cannot operate without DEF. And Pilot operates, if not the largest, one of the largest DEF supply networks in the country. We have 23 rail served DEF facilities that make the DEF, and we have 18 rail transloaders. Of the 300 plus million gallons of DEF that Pilot supplies to the industry every year, 74% is moved via rail. Union Pacific's restrictions will prevent Pilot from keeping many markets adequately supplied with DEF, likely causing shortages that will sideline trucks and reduce trucking capacity. Let me give you some context. A single rail car carries 21,500 gallons of DEF in terms of DEF delivery will reduce trucking potential by 5 million miles. All right, that's a really big number, 5 million miles, because you've got 3,000 fills and DEF blends with diesel at a ratio of 2.7% for 100 gallons, all right? So 2.7 gallons of DEF allow a truck to drive 100, uh, to use 100 gallons. Furthermore, a reduction in freight transported by the UP will only add additional pressure on the trucking sector in general. The railways are pulling back. We got to move the stuff on trucks. If we can't supply DEF, there's more pressure on the sector and we let the sector down. Second, fuel availability and pricing. Let me begin with diesel. U.S. diesel inventories today are running 10 to 15 percent below what they have been in the last five years at their lowest point. So if you take the minimum diesel inventory over the last five years, 
today we're 10 to 15 percent below that number. Certain markets like the Northeast, the West and the Southwest are even in a worse shape than the rest of the country. Renewable fuels like biodiesel, renewable diesel move exclusively on rail, on ships or on trucks, and there are no pipeline alternatives. Certain states like California are heavily dependent on the imports of renewable fuels that are generally transported on rail. Fourth, over 50% of pilots renewable diesel is transported on rail and having our capacity cut by 50% would actually increase fuel prices in these states and potentially run out some of these locations. Let me now address the challenge of gasoline. In order for gasoline to meet the octane requirements required by engines 87 to 93 octane, you have to blend gasoline with ethanol to get to that level of octane so that you can use it in a car. Ethanol like bio and renewable diesel basically moves on trucks, ships, or rail. In certain markets like parts of Arizona, Nevada, Pilot in partnership with Union Pacific has actually developed ethanol unloading facilities and we serve majority of these markets. Cutting Pilot's ability to ship ethanol from its plant in Nebraska to these markets by 50% will substantially reduce the amount of gasoline available in these markets because we can't blend the ethanol into the gasoline and would result in a further increase in prices during times when gasoline prices are up 48% since April 2021. To summarize, we believe UP's allocation logic is flawed, it's disproportionate and unprecedented. If implemented, it'll have three impacts. There'll be a significant impact on DEF supply, potentially stranding a large number of trucks, a negative impact on diesel and gasoline supply and prices in an already challenged market, and it'll hurt our supply chain during times that we cannot afford it. On behalf of Pilot, our 70,000 trucking fleet customers and the million customers that we serve in our stores every day to keep America moving, I want to thank you for this opportunity to testify here today to describe the situation and highlight the potential consequences of the countries to the country if this is left unresolved. As mentioned at the beginning, we want to be part of the solution, but the current situation is untenable for us. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have.